This is Opus 40, a monumental environmental sculpture rising out of an abandoned bluestone quarry in Saugerties, New York. It covers more than six acres. It is made of hundreds of thousands of tons of finely fitted bluestone, constructed stone by stone over a period of 37 years. It is all the work of one man, the sculptor Harvey Fite. Fite bought his quarry in 1938. The following year, he began work on what would eventually become Opus 40. But when he began clearing the brush and rubble and moving those first stones, his idea was to create a series of pedestals for an outdoor gallery of large carved stone statues set in the woods against the powerful backdrop of Overlook Mountain. He connected the pedestals with ramps and surrounded the ramps with terraces laced together at the bedrock floor with subterranean passageways. Where there were saplings, he left room for them to grow into trees. Where there were springs, he created quarry pools. But his carved sculpture began to be dwarfed by the magnificent setting he had created. As Fite put it, at first I was thinking of a medieval cathedral or a Hindu temple where carved sculpture would be appropriate. It did not occur to me that I was trying to put carved sculpture in a mountain range. My first statue, Flame, was only a three-quarter ton stone. I felt I needed a larger mass, so I carved the two-ton piece, Tomorrow, conceived in terms of dignity, tolerance, and strength, and then a four-ton quarry family. Fight had planned a series of carved statues that, taken together, would represent his humanist, one-world philosophy. The smaller figure of a praying child, Prayer, was the fourth statue, but he came to realize that even the Quarry family was still out of scale, too small. For years, Fight had had his eye on a huge pillar of stone he found in a nearby stream bed. In 1964, he brought it in to create a new dominant central figure to replace Flame. The new stone was 14 feet long and weighed close to nine tons. To raise it, Fite used principles he borrowed from the ancient Egyptians and the sculptors of Easter Island. He removed flame and its pedestal and dug down four feet into the terrace beneath it. The narrower end of the stone was tipped into the hole, and the large end was jacked up with a crib of heavy wooden blocks and pulled into a vertical position with a guy wire attached to a winch in the back of Fight's pickup truck. A huge A-frame of 30-foot timbers was raised over the monolith by the same system. The stone was lifted with a chain hoist, and a base was built up beneath it, topped by a three-quarter ton capstone. Fight trimmed its bottom end precisely across its center of gravity so that it would balance securely of its own weight, and finally the monolith was lowered into place. The monolith was the turning point of Harvey Fight's concept. He had once planned to carve the huge stone, but when I got it up, he said, I realized I would never touch it. His visionary sculptural work had outgrown its original vision, and so he took the carved statues off the quarry and placed them around in the woods and lawns and pools nearby. His quarry masterpiece now stood on its own. It was now that he decided he needed to name it, and the name that he chose was Opus 40. The name, suggested by the titles of classical compositions, reflects Fight's love of music and the rhythmic patterns of his walls and terraces. It comes from the Latin word for work, and it represents the 40 years Fight expected it would take to complete his vision. The name is partly inspired by a favorite quote from the Lebanese-American poet Khalil Gibran, Work is love made visible. Fight worked alone from the first thaw of spring until the winter snows forced him back to his studio and his carved sculpture again. He worked with his hands and with traditional quarryman's tools, lifting, sorting, chipping, and shaping the bluestone rubble, building walls with infinite patience and artistry. Although, as Fight said, patience is something you have to use when you don't enjoy what you're doing. The technique that Fight used in the building of Opus 40 is called dry key construction. 
It relies upon the careful fitting of stone upon stone and the pressure of the mass for stability. Large stones, called keystones, are placed at intervals throughout the wall. They anchor the construction, supporting the smaller stones around them. There is no mortar or cement anywhere in the construction. As a result, it is less vulnerable to the ravages of frost heaves and erosion. With the proper care and maintenance, Opus 40 could well be standing thousands of years from now. In 1969, Fite retired from his professorship at Bard College, his alma mater, where he had taught sculpture since the early 1930s. He used his newfound free time to build the Quarrymen's Museum on the grounds. The museum houses Fite's collection of folk tools and artifacts and household implements used by the 19th century settlers in this area, farmers and quarrymen. He had created Opus 40 out of the work of these pioneers, and he built this museum to honor them. In 1976, as he neared the completion of his massive quarry sculpture, Harvey Fite died in an accident at the age of 72. He was three years short of the 40-year goal from which he gave Opus 40 its name. He left some unfinished areas, but in a sense, Opus 40 is as complete as it ever would have been. It was the product of Fite's ceaseless vision and could only have been stopped by his death. In the years since, Opus 40 has received international acclaim. It was featured in a photographic exhibit, Probing the Earth, mounted by the Hirshhorn Museum of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, and critic Brendan Gill has called it one of the largest and most beguiling works of art on the entire continent. After Fight's death, his widow, Barbara Fight, created the non-profit that opened Opus 40 to the public. Today, Harvey Fight's masterwork is a jewel in the cultural crown of New York State, and a destination for thousands of visitors every year from around the world.